Psalms 88, a song or song for the sons of Korah, to the chief musician upon Mahalath, Lenoth, Mashio, which is instruction of Heman, the Ezraite. This is a lamentation, a mourning psalm of when you're in the valley and the only thing you got is a shovel to dig deeper. That's what life is. Life is not good. Life is, is sorrow, troubles, problems, and everything else. But God will give you peace. Oh, Lord, God of my salvation. And God's the one that owns the salvation, not you. It's not yours. If you say your salvation, then that means you earned it. You say, well, I read in the Old Testament, some of them say my salvation. Yeah, look what they had to do. I have cried day and night before thee. A constant 24-hour prayer. Serious prayer. Listen, there's one thing. There's someone always worse off than you. Get off your pity party. Get off, oh, woe is me. It ain't all about you. Yeah, you got troubles, you got problems. But what did Jesus Christ suffer? What did he get that he never did nothing wrong? Millions of people have been before you, and who knows how many people will be after you. What you do for Christ will last. Only what you do for Christ will last. And this is one of those psalms when you got troubles and problems, they say to read. I'd rather go in prayer. I read the Bible every day. I read a chapter of psalm every day. Let my prayer come before thee. Inclined that the prayer is stopped. He thinks God is not listening. He thinks God, you know, his prayer hits a brass ceiling. God hears your prayers. He may say no. He may say wait. God is not a bubblegum machine. And this is something I preach at the prison often. You don't put your prayer quarter in, turn the dial, and, and here comes the prize. It may take fasting. It may take much appealing. It may take tears. What? I used to tell the man to prison. What? Now you pray and you want God to open up that door. Like he did for Paul and Silas. Well, because it worked for Paul and Silas, does it mean it's going to work for you? God may be using your troubles and your problems for somebody's testimony to believe on him. For my soul is full of troubles. And it may be. And my life draweth nigh unto the grave. For all have sinned come the short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death. We're all going to die. And he's saying that these, these problems he's going for, the end result will be the grave. Death. Absent from the body and be present with the Lord. Nowhere in the Bible you promise this prosperity gospel or everything's going to be hunky dory. Listen, when you when you're two hours in the work and your back hurts and you, you're you're aching and all that, you still got six more hours to go, or however many hours you're to be. It's like endurance. It's long suffering. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that has no strength, weak, no insight, no, no really good future. He's not looking at his retirement age. He's looking at the present right now, death in the pit, and I'm weak. 
Many are like that. Many saved Christians are like that. Well, to be, if, you're, if you have not trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you'll go through all this misery, pain, and sorrow and die and end up in a place of torment, being tormented with torments, according to Luke 16. You die without Christ, you'll get no relief. The Bible says New Jerusalem, is there's no pain. There's no more sorrow. God will eventually wipe your tears away. You get a new body. So what is your hope? The Lord Jesus Christ. It better be. It better not be a doctor or health care or medicine or whatever you're trusting in, drugs. Those will all go away one day. Face the fact is you're going to have some kind of suffering and sorrow. Some way, sometime, maybe all the time in your life. It's going to happen. And if you do get on top of a mountain, the mountain peaks are very, 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 very short. And right over you get over that point, you go rolling down. And God says in his scriptures, Christian, that he'll never give you anything you cannot take. And I'm not quoting that. He'll not give you no burdens you, you can't handle, and he's to be walking with you. Will be if you are sinning and not doing what you're supposed to. And your fellowship between you and God has been broken. You are in sin, and you have not repented, and you're not doing right. And then your life is going to be, oh, the grave. Oh, I'm going down in the pit. Oh. And your hope is not Jesus Christ. Because you haven't been thinking about him. You haven't been praying him. You haven't loving him. Free among the dead, like the slain that lie in a grave, someone who's been killed. I'm no better than a man that is laying out in, the, out in the ground dead, hasn't even been buried, being eaten by the birds or the wild beasts. Whom thou rememberest no more. You know what? Tell me the name of the person that cooked George Washington's dinners in the White House. Anybody? What was the name of your grandmother that came to America? Whatever year. Now some of you may know that name. Some of you don't. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are. Your name will be forgotten one day. Matter of fact, the Bible says for a Christian that you're going to get a new name. What do you think about a man that has rejected Jesus Christ or rejected God when you go back to Noah's flood that did not get in the ark? You think that name is going to be remembered while they're in the lake of fire? What were the Indians names that, that came walking by here long before the English people settled? You guys, they had to, some Indians had to walk by this area. What were the names? We might be on the very spot where you know an Indian hunted or something. What were the names? Here's a good name. What were the names of Adam's daughters? Anybody want to take a guess? Uh huh. And they are cut off from thy hand. When a lost man dies, he is out of the love, John 3 16, and he is out of the strength and mercy and grace of God, and he goes into hell. And in hell, Luke 16, he wants mercy and grace, and God will not give it.
Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit. Not only am I in the in not only am I in the valley, I am now sitting here with a shovel in the lowest pit and digging deeper. A pit is a place where you dig a big hole and you put a bunch of leaves and, and trees and all that, and an animal comes along and falls into it. And there's no way to get out. No way to get out. In darkness, in the middle of the night, there's no light. There's no street lights. There was no street lights back then. In the deeps. Now, I'm sorry, but I'm going to say, I'll give you 75% of Americans have not been in this situation. You're telling me you're absolutely, completely without any medical help at all, or you can walk into any emergency room today and get some kind of treatment. There are people in third world nations all over this, all over this planet that cannot get what you have. There are some children that their parents died of a disease and they're four, five, six years old. At a time in Russia, I am told that if the kids' parents die, the, the, the orphans were put into prison. You got things so bad? You know what they do in prison? The misconduct, shall I say? And you're a six, seven year old boy? Talk, hey, let's, let's, let's talk about that. Your mom and dad just died of a disease or whatever, or accident, or whatever it is. All right, you're in a valley, and the next thing you know, you're thrown into a, you're thrown into jail. Isn't that even deeper than a valley now? You say you're being rough. We gotta look at other people. Third degree burns. I'm also told. The pain never goes away, especially if you got the I think it was skin graphing, and that if you are bedridden, you get bed sores, and they've got to roll your body around different positions. I'm told, and they got to put ointment on your bed sores, and they got to put ointment on your burn. Take Civil War history. Man gets shot with, with a lead bullet, with a lead uh, bullet, whatever you want to call it, in his leg. All right, here's a bottle of whiskey and a and a branch to put in your teeth as we're going to cut off your leg with a saw. When was the last time you thanked God for your bottle of pills or the aspirin? You know, we thank God over a meal. We we do this quick two, three, four blessing, and we start munching around. When did you ever ask? When did you ever thank God for the medicine we have? I fall on that one. That's just something new that just came to me by the Lord. I have never thanked the Lord. Uh, you know, I use uh, that oral gel when I get my toothpaste. I have never thanked the Lord. Always afterwards, you know, thank the Lord, pain's going away. But I never really thank the Lord the ability to go to a store, drive to a store, and get the medicine I need 24 hours a day. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me. Well, he must be sinning. Job was a sinner. It wasn't that God just beat him up and just, just for the thrill of it. Yeah. Somewhere in your life there is sin. Or you're saying that God just did it just to do it and to be a meaning. I don't believe that. You say, well, how can you say that? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that did not end when I got saved. I still sin. I'm not a holiness. I am a sinner. 
You hook up my brain to a speaker system if you can, and you come to me at work, and, and, and you listen to what my brain's saying. You'll see I'm a sinner. And thou hast afflicted me with all thy ways. Selah. Now that Selah, you point that to the tribulation period, the Jew. What's it called? Jacob's trouble. Waves. What kind of waves? Now this is not the order, but seals, woes, three of those, seven seals, three woes, seven trumpets, and seven vials. That sounds like a waves to me. And you got, what is it, the four horsemen of the apocalypse? I think it's four. That's before all the, the seals and all that are opened up. How about when Jesus Christ comes back on the horseback with his with the sword in his mouth? Isn't that waves? I mean, haven't you ever in your life? Oh, I got a pain. Oh, it's miserable pain. You go to the doctor, and then he gives you bad news. Okay. I got medicine. You take someone with cancer, all right? They got a pain or a lump. Doctor tells them it's cancer. They go to get the, the chemotherapy. Chemotherapy makes them sick. Then their hair falls out. And their body, you have to watch because their immunity is deteriorated. And if they catch something, isn't that waves? And you're going to drive around town with a thing that's on the back of your Jeep that says life is good. They got a Jeep thing coming up this weekend. You're going to see on the tire thing, life is good. No, only Jesus Christ is good that he'll give you the peace to go through it. Not personally, but I've been through death and cancer. And it's one after another. Then after death, I mean, you got the lawyers and you got all that. It just keeps going right along. And only God can give you the peace. Thou hast put away my acquaintance far from me. Sin. Fellowship is the acquaintance. He's not walking with God right now. God's not walking with him. Not only when you've got a, a life where you're lying to people, and if you're not confessing your sins, God is not walking with you. Thou hast made me abominable unto them. Other people know when you got troubles. Other Christians can look at you and say, there, there, there's something wrong with him in his life. Because there's no joy, there's no peace, there's no love. There's no long-suffering. The fruits of the Spirit are absent from your life. I am shut up. I don't mean you know you know quiet. He's shut up. He's locked up, quarantined. Now I cannot come forth. He's quarantined by God. I'm gonna write that down. I like that. Quarantine. I'm gonna spell it. So. He's quarantined. God may shut you up. My eyes mourn it by reason of affliction. Eyes mourning. Your, your eyes are just it's beyond crying. It's beyond tears. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hand unto thee. 
That's the stretching out of the hand. It ain't, hey, people, look at what I'm doing. Lord, it's... How do you know it wasn't even the hands that were hurting? Or he was straight. He was without strength. Uh, can you lift my hands? I don't know. Wilt thou show wonders to the dead? No, he won't. The dead is dead. I'm going to die, God. Shall the dead arise and praise thee? Selah. I want to say resurrection. Who's going to be in the millennium? David. Abraham. The twelve apostles. Us. We're going to be resurrected at the rapture. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes, oh boy, is there a, there's been resurrection. There's a resurrection in the middle of the tribulation. Elijah and Moses will be resurrected after they die. But if you go in a grave, nothing happens. Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave? What about if you're saved? Will God's loving kindness be declared in the grave? Absent from the body and present with the Lord. Where did an Old Testament saint go? He didn't go to heaven. You ever wonder in Abraham's bosom? Now it said Samuel said he was resting, but you ever wonder if they could hear the screams in hell? You ever think about that? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I know they couldn't feel the heat. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't feel no heat. They didn't smell that those people in Abraham's bosom didn't smell like brimstone. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But love and kindness in the grave is when we, when we die, we are present with the Lord. No ifs, ands, or buts. And it's it's a it's a time frame that you can't even measure. You may be you may be there holding your loved one's hand, and next thing you know, I believe this, and I can't show scripture, but I believe you're going to be kneeling at the Lord Jesus Christ, looking down at a pair of holy feet, and I mean. Holy as in H-O-L-Y and holy as in H-O-L-E. Because Jesus Christ is too scarred. Or thy faithfulness in destruction. Well, destruction would be hell. You think people in hell are going to see the faithfulness of God? They didn't have enough faith in God. But unto thee have I cried, O Lord. There are people today crying on the phone to a doctor, to their medical insurance, to gods, to statues, to. They don't cry unto the O Lord. Asa was a king of Israel, and he did semi right before God, but he died with his disease of his feet because it says he did not seek God but physician. Jesus said, yeah, he that is sick needs a physician. Well, wait a minute. Is that a contradiction? No, you go to God first. You take my boil. Okay, we had two or three different opinions of what this thing was. We didn't know what it was. I had no idea it was a boil. Prayed about it, went to the doctors. Found out what it was. Prayed over it, prayed over it, read about it, sought the Bible. We gave God the credit and gave God the prayer. Before running to the doctors, run to God. As far as his boil, God spoke after he said boil. I don't know how. I don't. I can't tell you how. Soon. I, hey, there was a king in the Bible that had a boil. He was going to die, and it said figs.
You know what you do when you run to a man? Ask that woman that bled for 12 years, spent all her living on physicians, the Bible said, and finally sought Jesus. You think a doctor really wants you healed? Ask me that question. When you get a copay uh, of, I'll just say $20, you pay him $20 copay, and then he gets more money from the insurance. Do you really think that doctor in 2014 wants you healed? If that doctor could heal everybody, he'd run out of business real quick. You know why God would heal you up or take care of you? Because the next problem you have, you'll, say, you'll look back and say, hey, God took care of me back then. And he'll get me through this, and if I live and survive, there'll be, there'll be a, a, a little bit of a mountain or hill, and then I'll go into the next problem. <laughs> if not, the worst thing that could happen to me is I die and go home to be with him. And verse 12, shall thy wonders be known in the dark? Where would that be? That's the grave. Now remember, this is a man who has not really had the revelation that we have today. They did not know what we know today. Get that. So a Jehovah Witness will run into this verse and say, See, when you die, you go to the grave and nothing happens. Well, what did Paul say about the absent from the body and present with the Lord? You're going to a group of people who have no knowledge of revelation. You know Martin Luther and uh, I'm trying to think of old names. Is that one they're always quoting all the time? I got this thing. I can't think of his name. I'm tipping my tongue. Well, Booth. Pilgrim's Progress, uh, Bunyan, Whitfield, all of them. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get that name. He was he was a great preacher and teacher in England. He had the great church. Everybody's quoting him today. I can't think of him. Charles Spurgeon. Do you know they don't? Some of them did not have the revelation we have today. There are some great preachers that actually thought that you could lose your soul. Die saved and, and go into You could lose it. There are some that, I mean, told all kinds of weird things. And, and the Lord had not revealed in the revelations that we have today in the Bible. A Jehovah's Witness will take this one verse and see, hey, dark. All right, yeah, dark, okay. What revelation do we have today? Hell. But he's thinking, when I die, is this gonna, he, he, when he dies, he's thinking like a Jehovah Witness. That's it. I'm just going to close my eyes to the general resurrection day. Even Martha believed in the general resurrection day. It's what you call soul sleep. And we know it don't happen, Luke 16. And then when, when Rachel dies, it says, and her soul was departing. Well, where did it depart to? There's no such thing as a soul sleep. And he's thinking as like Solomon wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. It's, it's what I can see, what I know. If I close, every dead person I see, their eyes are closed, so it must be dark. And thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness. Is that, let me ask you something. Can you point to a scripture today that would, that would refute this, what this guy thinks today? Well, I mean, as far as the forgetfulness. 
That man in Luke 16, what, uh, what, he knew he had brothers. <laughs> Isn't it agony today to the rapture of the church? As I, I said, Jacob's trouble, I believe only Jews will be saved. Nations will be saved on their conduct to the Jews. But would it, isn't it, would it be awful today that a man in hell today, in anxiety of wondering about his family, whether they're saved or not, and the only way he finds out the day when they die and they enter in hell with them. Imagine he's got a son that's 12 years old. And that boy lives to be 80 years old. 82 years old, if I can make it. 70 years that guy's in hell wondering. Is somebody witnessing to him? Did he get saved so he don't have to come here? He has memory. Now, I'm going to go, and like I said, I don't believe, I don't know how much we're going to remember in heaven. Only thing I know is we're going to know the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's enough for me. But unto thee have I cried, O Lord. He's crying unto God, Jehovah. In the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. Now that does not mean stop. It may mean prevent today. I should look that word up. You gotta go back, you gotta get yourself, and you can get it online. You don't have to pay the $60 one. You can find online in some Bible programs, the 1828 Webster's Dictionary, and it will give you the definitions of the words. And there are some words in the Bible that you're gonna have to see. Now, if you just read that along without somebody guiding you, and you need to look it up in the dictionary, prevent does not here does not mean stop. I mean, why would God prevent my prayer? And look up the word. I didn't and in my own apologize. Lord, why castest thou off my soul? And he has it. The Bible says, as far as Rachel, her soul was departing. His soul will go somewhere, and I believe that if this guy ends up in the book of Psalms, I don't think he's lost. I don't know. But if he's done what God's told him to do, his soul will go to Abraham's bosom, and then later on to be with God, if he's a Jew, and the new earth. If he's done what God's told him to do, God's not going to cast him off. Maybe he has a little guilt treatment of his sin. Why hidest thou thy face from me? Sin. Or maybe he says, hey, God, you're not answering my prayer. Why are you hide? Maybe guys look at him and say, I, I see you. But I can't answer your prayer now because and dot, dot, dot. It's not the time. I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. He has no fear of death. From his youth, you know what that says? That says he's been brought up with the Lord. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Also, when you're going through troubles and problems, Sometimes Satan will put that there to be a distraction, Job 1 and 2. Job was doing okay, except for those three friends. God, I mean, Satan tried to distract Job. He sent his wife. That was a distraction. Go curse God and die. Satan might, in your life, if you decide, you know one thing you what, how you may suffer is you're doing right and you got Satan angry and Satan may say, well, I want to touch that soul. I want to touch that person. I want to touch that Christian that's doing right, that's living by God and living godly in Christ Jesus. 
and let me distract them. And then you'll see that they don't love you. And when you're going through troubles and problems, you better do what Paul says. Rejoice evermore. Pray always without ceasing. It's not the time to quit. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. Now remember, we learned it could be Satan doing it. And God allowing him. It could be that this guy is in sin. Three things. If it's you, it's because you're sinning. If it's Satan, it's because you're doing right. If it's God, it's for punishment. Like a paddle on the rear end. Because you're doing wrong. It could be also God doing it to strengthen you. To giving you more faith and more trust in him. Listen, when you take a baby by his arms, he's ready to walk. He's going to fall down a couple times till he gets it right. There are times when you take a baby and you throw him up in the air and you catch him. When you do that, he's enjoying it now and he holds out for a daddy who's going to catch him. I know my daddy's going to catch me. That's getting close to daddy. That's getting a trust with daddy. And I'm enjoying it. Yeah, that, that kid is laughing. You do that to an adult, he'd be up there, you know, petrified. And worry, is he going to catch me? Is he going to catch me? Be as little children. Let God toss you up in the air with nothing around you. With his arms down below you ready to catch you. Let that happen. And then while you're doing it, enjoy it. Giggle. Because you think God's ever going to just let you fall? You don't really have a good, good thought of God when he does that to you and you think he's just going to pull his arms away. What? How much love and faith do you have in God? Verse 17, they came round about me daily like water. He's talking about the troubles and problems. They come past me all, all about together. I'm drowning in problems. Now, if Psalm 88 was Hollywood, Verse 18 would be, and the, 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 the man came in with his Uzi, shot everybody, and took him away, and everybody lived happily ever after. You know, every television program, every movie has a happy ending, as far as life goes. Now, I know, listen, I know the Lord Jesus Christ is going to rapture us out here, but let's take, let's say the Lord tarries today. And you've got such a serious pain in your back. And you're going to wake up tomorrow morning. Everything's going to be love and great. And you're going to be able to do those flips on that, that thing that they do with ballerinas and, and, and the, uh, what do you call it? The balance beam. If I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Let's read verse 18. Let's end the chapter in pain and suffering and sorrow. Let's see how the chapter ends. Lover and friend has thou put far from me. Who do you know in the Bible like that? Job. Jesus. Paul. Oh, I'm having a bad name, thing with names today. What's his name has forsaken me and gone back to his life? Demas. 
Well, my husband, my wife don't lover and friend has thou put far from me. God may be, hey, I want I want you and me. Come on, just you and me together. Let's you and I have a sweet fellowship. Let's you and I walk together. Let's you and I be in the garden together. And you know how that song goes when, when, when you're in the garden and, and he, he goes away and it makes you sad. No, Lord, don't go away. Uh, I got to go now. It's like, Lord, no. Well, it took me how many years to get you and I together? I'll be back. And my acquaintances, acquaintance, friends, not really friends, but into darkness. It does not end with a happy note. As far as life goes. As far as trouble goes. So when somebody comes up to you and says, you know, if you trust Jesus Christ, you say, everything. No. Now there will be days I get relief and comfort. There will be days, well, on a scale of 1 to 10, what's the pain? It's a 5. And there may be days, oh, okay, well, what's the pain on a scale of 1 to 10? 200 billion. Are you calling upon God daily? 1 to 200 billion? Are you seeking God day and night? Paul said, I sought the Lord three times for the thorn in his flesh. Did God answer him? Did he answer him with a yes? No. How about that? But what did he tell the Paul? And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna quote it completely, but he's gonna say I'm going to give you grace to endure. What if Paul never asked the Lord? He would never find, okay, God's not going to get rid of me, but God's going to give me grace. What if the God came down and spoke to you and said, listen, I'm not going to get rid of it. Stop it. Don't pray that prayer no more. Pray that I give you enough enough courage, enough strength, enough mercy and grace to get through what you're going through. But I'm not going to listen. He told Paul, "Don't pray for it no more." I'm going to give you grace. Now, don't you think there were a couple times, whatever that thing was, and when it bothered Paul, they say, "Lord, remember what you said." Yeah, whatever it is, it's it's acting up again. But I pray daily, and I pray day, and I pray night, and I pray to the God of the Bible. I don't pray to the doctor. And I know where I'm going when I'm going to die. He didn't. He didn't have the surety. He did not have these things have I written that you may know. He didn't have that, and still he remains faithful to God. Pain and suffering is something that is going to happen. It is because of the sin of Genesis 3. And woe be to you if you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Your pain and suffering does not end at death. Don't believe any religion. It only just begun. You may be you may live eighty years with pain on this planet, and if you die without Christ, you will suffer eternity, and there's no end in eternity. Burning, swimming in a lake of fire, without no no medicine. No booze, no drug, and no relief. Read Luke 16.
no mercy at all. Unless you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And the Bible says we'll get a new body. We'll get a new name. We'll, we'll have no more pain or sorrow forever to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. As he finally in, Gen in Re Revelation 21 wipes our tears away. Pain and suffering is going to happen. Until the Lord gets rid of this entire earth and things are made over new. I saw a new heavens and I saw a new earth. And for the Jews, this this passage here, this chapter, man, what it only tips the tip of the tip is of the tip of the tip of the iceberg uh, of what the tribulation period is going to be those seven years. He talks about death here, and the, and the Bible in Revelation says that there's going to be a point in time that man's going to seek death and cannot find it. I believe it's three months. Man will not be able to die, though he seeks it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. The gift of God. Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his returning could happen anywhere. 